Hey, this is Luke. In this video, we're gonna cover a topic that anybody who wants to consistently catch fish has to know. For example, do you know exactly why a fish will move during summer versus winter and why they move before and after cold fronts and how they react? If your answer isn't a definite yes, then you're not as consistent as you could be and we're gonna help you solve that. And it's all about, again, it's about knowing the fish. It's not just thinking like a fish, it's actually knowing how a fish reacts without thinking, how they actually react to the changing weather pattern or a changing, a changing season, even, even a cold front can, can make a fish completely react and they do it consistently. That's the great thing about it. It doesn't matter where you are, if you're in Florida, if you're in Texas or somewhere in between or up the Atlantic, it's all about just knowing how a fish is going to react based on a weather condition. Because if you know that, you're gonna put yourself in the right place at the right time more consistently than anybody else there on the water. A quick story on something that really helped change my game. And I just really started just thinking about a fish's biology and how they react to changing waters. For years, I never even considered it. And it's really simple when you look at it that way. And it's really winter time. A fish can't moderate their own temperatures. They're looking for warmth. And so I'll show you some cool drone footage that we took and it actually shows where fish position during the winter time when they're actually looking to be warm because in the winter time again they, they're looking for warmth and there are a couple things that you can do to identify the areas that are most likely going to have the warmest water and that's going to be areas that are especially when the sun's up like it is today areas that are shallow with the mud bottom because mud attracts and holds heat better than than rock or sand so in many cases during the winter time all you really need to do is look for areas with, with shallow, muddy bottoms on a sunny day, and there's gonna be good fish sitting there just warming themselves, but they're also gonna eat if you get a lure presented to them properly. Another tip for wintertime fishing is just to know that the wind-protected shorelines are most often gonna be a little bit warmer than the windy shorelines. And that's because you know, as the air is, co is cooler than the water, there's just less surface area that, that is of the air interacting with the water. So the, the air just literally cannot penetrate the water. The water nearly as good as it does on the windy side. So just knowing that, those three things alone, knowing that the wind-protected shoreline plus dark bottom plus muddy material if you find that combination after a cold front on a sunny day, you're gonna find fish. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, so during the summertime, you know, obviously warmth is not a factor. They're plenty warm and, and typically that'll speed up their metabolism so that they're feeding better. But in the summertime, especially for some species, when it gets really, really hot, like when it gets on the high spectrum, at that point, it is important to know that that warmer water has less dissolved oxygen than cooler water. So as the temperature increases and goes up and up and up, that's gonna be less dissolved oxygen, which is what fish rely on for their actual energy. So there's always a point in time when it gets too hot that then the dissolved oxygen is a big factor. So you need to start looking for areas that have as much dissolved oxygen as possible during those hot months, because that again is where the fish are gonna be. They're not even thinking about it. That's just their body telling them that they're uncomfortable and they're gonna keep swimming until they find what they're looking for, what their body is telling them to get. And at that point, again, in the summertime, they're looking for dissolved oxygen. So areas like seagrass beds or, or passes and inlets. So seagrass beds are great because seagrass actually gives dissolved oxygen into the water. And then passes and inlets, you know, areas where that, that funnel a lot of water from one place to another, is just gonna have more oxygen. There's gonna be more oxygen running through the fish's gills in those types of areas. So they'll often seek those types of areas during the summertime. So you can see in the summertime, a lot of fish positioned up on grass flats, up in potholes that are up in grass flats, in particular, the ones that are either in or near areas with a lot of current, because that, again, during the summertime is most often gonna be where they position themselves. All right, so on top of those just high level seasonal kind of trends, it's very important to look at the lower level trends. And that's really all about just tracking your results. It's about logging your, your trips, what you're catching. You'll, you'll see a lot of guides are doing that. A lot of the people who are very serious about getting consistent, they're logging their catches. They're keeping track of where they're seeing fish during what tidal phase, during what season, you know, what, what the type of conditions were, the water clarity, all that stuff is a big, big deal. And so you have to know, you know the, those little small details to truly be a consistent angler and having your own log is a great way to do that. Yeah, so keep these logs is incredibly important. If you're not doing it yet, I highly recommend making those and keeping track of them. I've graduated from doing the printed out sheets to using today's technology, and it's just so much more effective. I now just, I just go, go out fishing, I log what I catch. In many cases, I actually keep footage and film the footage of what I did. I, I log you know, the, the weather, the temperature, the tide, 
the water clarity. I just log all of that stuff and then track it. And I built a system out where we now can actually click a season, click on a type of tide, click on a species, and it'll show all of the past reports so that we can just go in and re, you know, remember and, and look into and, and understand the trends that are most likely gonna apply for that exact time period. Here's an example of, of how we're organizing our reports, our, our, our stats, so that we can track and predict trends over time based on the important factors, right? Based on the species, based on the season, what the weather was like, tide, and water clarity. And so what we're doing is every one of our trips, you know, we go out and we take video footage and, uh, and describe, you know, describe what happened. We'll give a little example here. So we talk about, you know, the trends, uh, document, you know, the weather, what we're fishing out of, what lures we're using, the time, um, talk about the tides, obviously, note like the high level trends, and then we show footage. And in many cases, uh, we're bringing the drone out just to show the bird's eye view, just to help help our members because what we're doing is we're actually uh, enabling our insider members to access all of this this way you know the members don't have to go out and uh, and spend the time and an effort to organize an in-depth system like this they can really just utilize what we're doing to supplement whatever they're doing or just use what we're doing uh, you know for for themselves altogether so the cool thing about this is we can uh, we can filter based on a variety of different factors we can just look okay if i just care about redfish click redfish and now here are all the various reports that are describing redfish that show how redfish were caught or show what was happening on a specific day but if we want to really get granular if we know that we're going to be fishing you know in the winter time and we want to target redfish sea trout floundered snook um, and on a clear day on an incoming tide with clear water we click you know click all those apply the filter and then that'll filter down it'll filter down all the reports that have that combination. So again, very helpful, very helpful information. And then, you know, from this, we can then click on it and then again, see those same type of, uh, of high level data points and then dive into the actual report where we show on the water details of exactly what we caught. And uh, we zoom in, you know, on those Google Maps or Bing Maps, MapQuest, whatever map is best for the particular area that we're going in. We'll zoom into the lowest level and, and explain to you exactly where the fish were holding. So again, really cool information. And on the bottom of each one, obviously, is the comments area where people can can uh, can leave comments, ask questions, so on and so forth. Just wanted to let you know, you know, how we're doing it. Is that if you are gonna to, gonna specify and get to the to the more granular level, if you are really taking this seriously and want to be extremely consistent is that highly recommend you know breaking out species because each species reacts a little bit differently break out weather on as far as clear cloudy rainy tide incoming versus outgoing and, uh, and water clarity all of these factors are very important to consider when you're when you're planning your trip and so that it's very important is to you know when you're collecting data it is to collect at that same level of information and ideally in a way that enables you to filter through the information to find you know, what you're looking for at the right time.